Me, I told you to the greatest. The Run with Lenny Wilson Podcast. The Run with Lenny Wilson Podcast. The best sports podcast there is. Yes, sir. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to The Run with me, Manny Wilson, all the way from Detroit to Chicago to your speakers and headphones. I appreciate you tuning in to the first interactive sports podcast, you know, a community that makes sure your voice is heard. So if you hear something you agree with, you disagree with, you like or you dislike, go ahead, shoot me a quick take. 219-413-9405. And of course, we'll play your take back on our voicemail line next episode. And shout out to SeatGeek for sponsoring this episode. Get $20 off your first ticket purchase when you use the promo code The Run Podcast. Now, this code can only be applied for first-time users on the mobile app or website. So I don't know about you, but going to a couple games, man. Playoffs right now for MLB. Um, the NFL season is up and rolling almost at that midseason point. So I'm going to some games. So I'm going to create me an account and then I'm buying a ticket to get my $20 off. So, hey, anyway, look, man, hey, we got to take a couple steps back because, you know, some news went down a few weeks ago, actually, or I think it was last week. And I never really got a chance to touch on it because it was just a lot going on. It happened. I believe it was like NFL Sunday or something. So the timing of, you know, this trade went down and it shocked everybody. And it was a little crazy. So it was the New York Knicks and the Minnesota Timberwolves that we heard about, of course. Um, the Knicks, they traded for Carl Anthony Towns. They traded him from the Timberwolves, and they received uh, Carl Anthony Towns. But the Minnesota Timberwolves ended up receiving Dante DiVincenzo and Julius Randle from the New York Knicks. So two-for-one swap here, and, and a lot of people were saying, oh, it's not a clear winner of this trade. But no, 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 no. That's just incorrect. There's a clear winner in this trade. And it's obvious. One team is relieved. One fan base should be relieved. And the other fan base should still be a little iffy and don't know if it's going to work. And I say this because the New York Knicks right now, after trading for Carl Anthony Towns, bro, this helps them so much more as a team because Carl Anthony Towns is going to compliment everybody on that team so much more than what DiVincenzo and Julius Randle will do for the Minnesota Timberwolves. And the main reason I say this is because one Carl Anthony Towns can shoot the ball. Julius Randle cannot shoot the ball. We're looking at a 31% three-point shooter here and a guy who chucks it at the rim and barely gives any effort when he's on the floor. I know Carl Anthony Towns has some shaky moments where he's bad on defense or he might be exhausted, but best believe, from what we've seen in the playoffs this last run that he had, he gave effort, and Demi, he showed up big when he had his energy. So I got to give credit to Carl Anthony Towns here, but above all of that, in the skill level of, oh, this guy can shoot, this guy can't shoot, the main thing here is, obviously, the Knicks have another person to run their offense through. They don't have to give the ball to Jalen Brunson every play and let him go to work and score. Now they can say, Cat, post up, get down on the block and score for us. Or we can run a play and run the offense through Carl Anthony Towns instead of trying to, you know, scramble and and pick and roll for Jalen Brunson for four quarters because it's not going to work. It did help them get all the way to the East. It helped them get to the second round and have some success. But above all, it's not useful. It's, it's, it's hard to maintain. It's rough. Julius Randle, I get, you know, he can score. He can get to the cup. And, you know, he's, he brings a veteran presence because he's been in the league for a minute. As some people have been saying. But above all, bro, the guy is not, the guy is not offensively sound, bro. I'm sorry. Julius Randle's not offensively sound uh, sometimes and and on the defensive end too from what we see on the defensive end he's not necessarily defensive sound and my main concern here for the Timberwolves is obviously you got Anthony Edwards but you get rid of his co-partner in Carl Anthony Towns and bring in a guy who can't shoot who can't spread the floor and you still have Gobert there who's going to clog up the paint even more so now you got uh, Gobert and Julius Randle two guys who can't shoot the ball at all on the floor at the same time Hell no. Absolutely ridiculous. It's ridiculous to think about that they're going to have these guys. And hopefully that's not the case because they got Nas Reed. And Nas Reed can't shoot. He can spread the floor. Um, We've seen him go crazy in the playoffs as well. So hopefully that's not the game plan that they decide to go with Rudy Gobert and Julius Randle on the floor at the same time. Because that's just going to be nasty. Don't nobody want to see that. What I do like about the Timberwolves trade 
in picking up DiVincenzo. It's the fact that they have DiVincenzo there. So now he's a guy who can create more offense for the Minnesota Timberwolves. Not necessarily a guy who you can run the offense through, but we know DiVincenzo is going to play both sides of the ball. He's going to hustle. He's going to play defense. He's going to score. He can knock down threes. That's another three-point shooter that you have on that team. DiVincenzo, he lit it up. Don't forget, in the playoffs, he lit it up. He helped the Knicks out of some clutch situations that helped them get the win in that series against the Philadelphia 76ers. So you got to give DiVincenzo his credit. And I like that aspect for the Timberwolves of bringing in another shooter and another guy who's going to play lockdown defense. Because that was really like the identity of the Minnesota Timberwolves last year is we knew they were a defensive team. Those guys sat down and they locked up whoever was in front of them, whether it was Anthony Edwards himself playing defense, whether it was Jaden McDaniels playing defense, whether it was Nas Reed, Rudy Gobert. And now you got DiVincenzo added to the mix. Like, uh, uh, yeah, that, this is about to be a definitely defensive sound team. And they're still going to be able to hold that identity. But the only thing is like, man, the, like Carl Anthony Towns is a huge piece there and he helped out a lot when you talk about having trees down low and protecting the rim and just playing defense when he does have energy so it's gonna be a good mix up above all man it's it's we gotta see how it plays out I think sometimes in the off season or the very early stages of the season we get so caught up in, oh, they got this name, this name, this name, this name, this name, and, and we haven't seen it work out. So hypothetically, I assume, you know, the Knicks have won this trade because you bring Carl Anthony Towns. I think he can still spread the floor and, you know, he's another guy you can run the offense through. But, I mean, you got to consider health. Obviously, health is a thing. They're still missing Mitchell Robinson, a guy who's going to be huge for the Knicks as well. And Mitchell Robinson can, I mean, he can play defense too. He can, I mean, he grabs hella boards and all of that stuff. So, you know, you get, you think about this stuff. They added M- Mikael Bridges and the Knicks, they got a good little surrounding over there. So you have to consider those different things and those different elements. But we, I mean, health is going to be the ultimate factor here. Um, OG Ananobi, OG Ananobi is still there, and um, Mikael Bridges, Josh Hart. You got some guys on this team that 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 match up pretty well with bringing Carl Anthony Towns. But we'll see, we'll see how it goes for them. Um, I think right off the bat, though, I'm I'm going uh, Knicks win this trade. Knicks win this trade. You you have a solidified one, two, three, four. Like you have a solidified roster. I'm still a little concerned about the bench support, but I think a when people say Timberwolves has won this trade, Timberwolves is already in a little bit better condition than what we've seen from the Knicks anyway, which why, which is why it may seem like they really won this trade. But I don't think this is a bad trade on either end. It's good. I was a little upset when Cat got traded because I did think Anthony Edwards and Carl Anthony Towns was a great dynamic duo. But clearly they wanted more shooting. They wanted another perimeter defender. But we'll see. We'll see how it turns out. Look, man, we got some MLB stuff coming up. MLB playoffs is here. Y'all know them Tigers. They won again. Let's do it. So, look, uh, hey, we got a side note here. We'll take a quick break and then jump back in it with the side note. Don't go anywhere. All right, man, look, so, so I got a quick side note here, and this side note is about the Tigers. You know, the Tigers, they won again, again and again and again. The thing here that's, like, kind of crazy about this from the jump is that nobody expected the Tigers to go this far at all to the divisional round and actually have an advantage in the divisional round it's kind of crazy I think even if you ask many Tigers fans even Tigers fans is like no you know I, I knew we we were getting better we looked promising for next year but we didn't think it was coming this year and then the end of the season Tigers got hot and obviously playoffs anything can happen and that's what we're seeing right now but if you don't know if you're not familiar Tigers they have a two to one lead in the series against the Guardians right now game four is happening tonight um, probably soon maybe you listen to it when it's going on right now I don't know whatever but it's about to happen um, over here on my time and probably like an hour so gearing up for this game with the Tigers and the Guardians it's happening at Comerica Park and you know shockingly I think the biggest separator here is obviously we're not worried we're not worried about um you know losing in this particular game of like losing the series but we're kind of right where we want to be if you make it if if you really look at the situation of the tigers and where they are we're kind of right where we want to be we're up two to one 
and we're at Comerica Park at home. This is a great situation for them. Um, I think the guys who have been least expected to play well have been kind of playing well. I, I mean, we in a strange sense, the Tigers, to sum it up, they have a bunch of role players playing around, around one star. There's not many guys on the Tigers where it's like, oh, this, yeah, we knew he was going to be an animal. We knew he was going to be great. But the biggest separator here has been the pitching. The pitching has been huge. Obviously, Cy Young, we got school. He's been tearing it up. He, anytime he's pitching, it's very promising that, all right, hey, Tigers might secure this win here. So even if the Tigers lose and goes to the game five, you're going back to Cleveland, which is going to be a tough environment. But, you know, we can count on school to pitch. Because I don't, I don't think he's starting tonight. I think they got Green in pitching tonight. But, I mean, you still got other guys who can hold it down. Brisky has been playing good. Um, you got Will Vest. He's been playing good as well with the Tigers. And, like, thinking about the innings that these guys have pitched, they haven't allowed many hits at all. So that's the, the part where I'm like, it's separating the Tigers that we've seen way early on in the season compared to what we're seeing right now. So, and then, I, I mean, even it, as long as, we're playing solid defense. You know, we're throwing the ball good and and keeping a solid rotation between our guys on the mound. And I think the the Tigers will do just fine. And they have a shot at actually winning. So it's it's interesting. And I'm hoping, I'm hoping that the Tigers, they end the series today. Um, it would be good if they go on and they end the series. Then I think next up they'll be uh playing, I want to say it's the the Mets, it would be um if they win. But I, I'll, I'll explain that in the news and all of that. But anyway, man, like, I, they have a shot. They have a shot. And this is still surprising. Either way, this is looked at as a good season because nobody expected it at all. So however far the Tigers decide to go, it's just going to be like a good, good job. Good job, pat on the back. <laughs> it's going to be a good job, pat on the back. Y'all did great this season. Tigers was all right. Cool. But, you know, the thing you got to consider, too, is like, we're saying they're doing good and all of this. But, I mean... As I said, there's a lot of no-name guys and guys who don't have a huge name in this league right now. So they're playing for the contract. They're playing for the respect. They're playing to get big numbers uh, handed to them next season because next season they go on and, you know, who knows what might happen. People get injured and and they might want to go somewhere else. But Tigers open a checkbook and say, hey, we want you back right here because look at the numbers that you did last postseason. Look at the numbers you did in the the back end of the season. That's going to turn things around. So although they don't have the big names and everybody doesn't know who they are yet, the more you win, the more people are going to recognize and realize and understand and see and look and and, and scout out who you have on your team because they're going to wonder, how the hell are they winning so many games? Who do they have on this team that's winning so many games? It's going to be a question that that comes to everybody's mind as long as they continue to win. So, you know, this this is the year for the guys on this Tigers team to just prove Hey, I'm here. I'm here. I, I, I got, I'm nice. I'm nice on the mound. I'm nice in the outfield. I'm nice at shortstop. Like, this is the year for them to prove that, and they've been doing that. So, as long as the Tigers open up the checkbook, make sure these young guys stay here in Detroit. It's going to be promising. Regardless of what happens, you know, in this series against the Guardians, regardless of what happens in the next series after the Tigers go on. But either way, it's it's a win-win. It's a win-win. Obviously, you you want your team, you want the Tigers to go as far as they can. Um, seeing the Yankees next, if that's the case, um, looks like they'll probably beat the Royals. But that would that would phew. Tigers beat the Yankees. Everybody's everybody's getting a huge contract. <laughs> everybody's getting a huge contract. That's 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 wild. I'm not even gonna go there. We are gonna take it game by game. That's what, what that's what's been preached from leadership down all the way in the Tigers organization. So we're gonna take a game by way game. They got this game four here tonight at Comerica Park. And let's get that done first before we start talking about what's next and what else they can do. But we'll we'll see. We'll see where they go from there. Other than that, look, hey man, we got some news for the run. But before we cut to the news, just want to let you know. Hey, shoot us a quick take on our voicemail line. 219 413 nine four zero five and of course we'll play a take back on our next episode so look hey we'll be right back hanging there we got some news for the run let's do it all right and news for the run starting off with the mlb postseason it's the divisional round and as i said the tigers they're leading the guardians right now two to one that game four is taking place today at comerica park 
um, in just about an hour, or maybe you're watching it right now. Who knows? Anyway, so Tigers got the lead on them. The Mets, they beat the Phillies 3-1, to one, so they will advance. And the Mets, they'll play the winner of the Dodgers and the Padres. Now, the Dodgers and the Padres right now are tied 2-2, two to two, and the Game 5 will be played in L.A. on Friday. Now, Yankees, they're also in a series against the Royals. They're playing that series. Um, game four is happening tonight in Kansas City. But Yankees, they have the lead right now, two to one. So if they win this, then that series is over with. And, you know, another crazy thought, too, about MLS, MLB is with the Mets doing pretty good right now, they just advanced and they had a huge game in that game three. Or that, that was or game four. I'm sorry. That was just a crazy, crazy game. Crazy, crazy game. Um, with a grand slam at the end to give them the win. And, man, that was that was wild. So I say all of that with the Mets doing good and the Yankees doing good. Could not imagine, could not imagine a Yankees-Mets World Series. The world will go in shambles. New York would probably deliver the best content we've seen in sports history. It would just be wild. It would be wild. Just imagining New York fans having that much fun, whether they're a Mets fans or a Yankees fan, it would it would be wild. I don't know if the world necessarily needs to see that <laughs> right now. I don't know if we need to see that. Anyway, look, some college football going on. It's a couple of games that I'm going to be watching. I'll go ahead and just share that with you guys. So number two, to, number two is going to be playing number three, Oregon. Um, so number two right now is Ohio State. They're going to be playing number three, Oregon, this Saturday. It's going to be a crazy, crazy matchup. Definitely got to tune into that. Number one will take on number 18, Oklahoma in Texas this Saturday. Number four is going to play, or number four, Penn State, will play USC. You got number nine, Ole Miss. They're going to play number 13, LSU, which is going to probably be a good game, man. It's another battle in the South. Both of these teams are ranked, trying to stay relevant. All of these ranked matchups is, is going to be huge, so... Um, you got Florida. They're playing number eight, Tennessee, in Knoxville. Tennessee, they lost last week. They were upset. They were top five, but got moved down all the way to number eight. Colorado, they're going to take on number 18, Kansas State. Kansas State is a ranked team, but Colorado is not. So, of course, this would be huge for Colorado to get a win over a ranked team because you just never know where they'll end up if they, you know, beat ranked teams. You just don't know. You don't know how it's going to go. I know, like, Michigan – they moved all the way down because they lost and they were a highly ranked team. But above all, some of these teams in college football, they moved up. Missouri was one of them. Pittsburgh, number 22, is far down, but they're 5-0. They've been taking care of business. Illinois, another one, 4-1. and one. They've been taking care of business. So, hey, you just never know. You just never know. You just got to come with it every Saturday. Um, and then my Bama boys, they're going to be playing against South Carolina. Them is at number seven right now. South Carolina is not ranked, so they got to make sure they secure this win, bro. They lost to an unranked team in Vanderbilt. It was just a tragedy to watch as a Bama fan. But, you know, hey, well, anything can happen. I'm going to definitely be watching that from the corner of my eyes because the week after that, they got Tennessee. You can't play around. You can't play around. They, they got to have a better performance than what they did last week. Anyway, look, a couple of NFL games, too, that I'm definitely going to be tuning into. Um, so the Buccaneers, they're lined up to play the New Orleans Saints. Right now, we still don't know if Derek Carr is going to be healthy or not at this particular moment. Um, the Lions, they'll play the Cowboys in Arlington. Going to watch that game. Cowboys have beat the Lions, and the Lions have failed to beat the Cowboys since 2013. They have not beat the Cowboys since 2013. Going to be a crazy matchup here to see what really happens and how the Lions bounce back and try and rewrite history. Um, then you got the Ravens and the Commanders. This is going to be a huge, cool duel, quarterback duel here, watching Lamar Jackson versus Jaden Daniels. I'm super interested in this. Um, both of these guys have been compared to each other. Well, I guess Jaden Daniels have been compared to Lamar Jackson in terms of his style of play and how smart he is with the ball and the accuracy and all of that stuff as well. So hey, that's going to be a matchup to watch. That will probably be the main matchup I watch outside of my Falcons. Hopefully they blow out the Panthers. Um, they play this Sunday, but hopefully they blow out the Panthers so I can just look at something else and enjoy the win. But then other than that, man, you got the Cardinals playing the Packers. This is going to be another great game, too, at Lambeau Field. Both of these teams come with it, man. We've seen Jordan Love. He's had a game back, and now he's playing back at Lambeau Field. Obviously, Kyler Murray, who's the MVP candidate in my head, that dude has been playing great. 
Cardinals had a huge win over the 49ers last week. Man, it was a comeback victory. And, I mean, hey, anything can happen. So I got to keep an eye out for that game as well. But tonight, man, um, what we're going to be watching, Seattle Seahawks playing the 49ers. Um, both teams are coming off an L. You got one of these teams coming off two consecutive L's. Um, and, you know, they're, they're trying to turn the page. They're trying to turn the page. 49ers, they lost last week. Um, and then Seahawks, they lost in two consecutive weeks. The Lions in Detroit, they lost. And then they turned around and then lost again to the New York Giants, which is nobody expected them to lose to the Giants, which is wild. But I, I think above all, in this game here against the 49ers and the Seahawks, this is going to be a good game. And I, I actually have the Seahawks to win this game. Now, I know 49ers is the 49ers. They got the offense that they have. They got the hype that they have. They have the support that they have. But above all, I say the Seahawks are going to win this game because it's been tough for the 49ers to defend the pass. We've seen a lot of slot receivers get loose. We've seen a lot of teams attack the air on them, and they've done it successfully. So when I'm looking at a team like the Seattle Seahawks, who are an air raid type of team, you have a quarterback who's throwing the ball over 30 passing attempts in the last four games, that tells me they're going to let it fly. They're going to let the ball fly out, and no matter what, whether it's incompletions or not, they're throwing the ball. And then you can't completely forget about the run game because Kenneth Walker III is back. He can catch. He can run. So I'm kind of siding with the Seahawks to win this game here because the way the matchup is lining up, I'm just not necessarily thinking that the 49ers can hang with them on the defensive end. And usually what we see from the 49ers is, okay, the 49ers are going to put up points. They're going to outscore you. They're going to definitely get some points on the board. But that has not been the case in the past few games or the past few weeks, I should say. That just hasn't been the reality of what we expect from the 49ers. They're 2-3 and three right now, 0-2 on the road, and they got to go against the Seattle Seahawks on the road in Seattle, home of the 12th man. So I, the way I'm looking at this right now, you lose to the Rams at home, you lose to the Vikings, and those two teams are great in their own ways, whatever, but do you think the Seahawks are going to be any easier, even easier than the Cardinals that you had to play? No, absolutely not. And I mean, it was an ugly win. It was an ugly win. It was an ugly or an ugly, ugly loss from the uh, San Francisco 49ers blowing the league like they did. And it, they'll try and bounce back. But I think the Seahawks will just be able to come with it a little bit more. Um, I, I think they'll be a slightly better. We've seen them in the previous few weeks not look as great as they did in the first three weeks. Granted, the first three weeks was easier teams. You played the, the Broncos. The, the, uh, the Patriots and the Dolphins, a little bit easier teams to work with. And, you know, Dolphins, no tour, a little bit easier teams to work with. So you go against some teams, man. Um, but I, I think above all, the Seattle Seahawks are going to go ahead and take this win here. They'll get the ball flying up in the air. 49ers, it's going to be tough to defend. But if the 49ers defense can come out and really hold Geno Smith to launching the ball in the air as many times as he can and you know, break up some of these receptions and stuff, then maybe we may see a different game. But above all, I think the Seahawks, they're going to end up wrapping it up and, and making something happen for themselves. Finally getting out of this two-game slump here and winning this ball game at home. Winning this ball game. Hard, it's, hard it's hard to lose at home, even though they lost to the Giants. I don't know. I still don't know how that happened. Still don't know how that happened. Just crazy. But anyway, hey, look, <laughs> leave a quick take if you heard something you agree with or you just want to go ahead and get your takes off, 219-413-9405. And, of course, we'll play your take back on our next episode. I'm going to leave you all with a positive note here, man. And a positive note is just the good old days are the present time, bro. A lot of times we talk about, man, I wish we could go back and relive those good days that we experienced or wish I could go back and do this. And, man, if only I could have that moment twice. That's the present moment, bro. That's the present moment. What you are currently doing and what you're currently experiencing is something you're going to look back on and be like, damn, if only I could have went back to that time. If only I could experience that again. So just hey, accept that however you want to accept that. Receive it how you want to receive it. But I'm going to leave you all with that. And then, hey, man, hey, share this to a cousin, a brother, an aunt, an uncle, a niece, a nephew, anyone you know who may enjoy sports, especially if I talked about their team. Go ahead, shoot this their way. I promise you they're not going to mind. And then other than that, hey, follow me on Instagram. Follow the podcast page at The Run Podcast. Follow my personal as well at I.L. Manny Wilson. We got some news coming up. Not sports news. 
just news about the run. So I'll share it at some point. Or maybe you'll hear it at some point if you're listening. But it's some news. It's some news. So this is what I'm telling you to follow because there's some news. I don't know how I'm going to announce it whenever I announce it. But even though it's official, I still can't even believe it. I think I'm just digesting it, to be honest. Um, <laughs> I think I'm just digesting it. But some news coming out. So follow the Instagram. All right. Look, hey, other than that, y'all have a great weekend. <laughs> y'all have a great weekend. Appreciate the time. Appreciate your time. And hey, we'll be back later on next week. We'll be back Monday, Tuesday, maybe Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Who knows? We'll be back later on next week. It's so on. It's so on. And so on. <laughs>